<clears throat> this presentation is going to look at the idea of gross domestic product, both nominal and real. We have been talking in previous presentations about the ideas of national income and national output. We have learnt that both of these concepts are ways of measuring the size of an economy. We are now going to add a further definition of size, which is not just national income in one year and not just national output in one year, but also the total amount of spending done in one year. Because nobody can earn an income in an economy without somebody else doing some spending. So there is a natural connection between total income and total spending. Now, all of these measures can be called national income or national output, but they are usually abbreviated to three letters, GDP. Now, GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product. Gross Domestic Product. And the gross domestic product of the UK is very roughly measured in US dollars. All GDPs are measured in US dollars uh, for ease of comparison. So the gross domestic product of the UK is roughly two trillion US dollars. Whereas the gross domestic product of the USA is roughly, very approximately, 15 trillion US dollars. And a trillion is a thousand billion, and a billion is a thousand million. So the USA economy can be said to be roughly seven times the size of the UK economy. Now, these numbers, 2 trillion, 15 trillion, etc., <clears throat> are simply what we call nominal GDP. And that means that it's just the raw money value of everything that was produced or earned in those economies in one year. So roughly speaking, we can say that in one year, the total money value, the raw money value of everything that's produced in the UK is roughly $2 trillion whereas the raw money value of everything that's produced in the USA is roughly $15 trillion. Now, what do we mean by raw money value, and why does that matter? Well, we have to understand that, unfortunately, GDP is affected by an increase in prices. And this can make it look as though the economy has, in fact, grown when really it hasn't. So let's look at this example by imagining an economy which in the year 2000 produced only two cars. So imagine that was all the production that happened in the economy was two cars and the prices of these two cars were identical and they were 10,000 pounds each. So the value of output in this economy in the year 2000 was 20,000 pounds. Now, let's imagine that in the next year, 2001, this economy also produced just two cars. So the economy has not grown because it was producing two cars last year and it produced two cars the following year. However, imagine that the price of these two cars rose to £12,000 each rather than £10,000. Now the GDP is £24,000. And it looks as though the GDP of the country has increased because the nominal GDP has gone up. It's gone from 20,000 to 24,000. So we have an increase in nominal GDP of 20%. But we know that the economy has actually shown zero growth because it's still making two cars, which is exactly what it was making a year ago. So how do we fix this apparent and false growth rate of 20%? Well, it's, the answer is that we have to adjust the nominal GDP for the increase in prices, which we call inflation. 
Now, there happens to be an index number, a number, which summarizes the general price level in the economy at any one time. And this is called an index number. It's actually called, um, there are many names for this index number. One of them is the consumer price index. The other one is the retail price index. And there are many other index numbers that measure the general price level in the economy. Now, let us assume that 2000 is our base year. It is the year that we are going to use to compare to every other year. The index in the base year is always given the value of 100. And let's assume that because prices went up in 2001 by 20%, the index will also have gone up to 120. Now, the way we adjust nominal GDP for inflation is that we take the nominal GDP in one year and we multiply it by the ratio of the index number in the base year divided by the index number in the current year, which is the year we're talking about. So let's see how this works for the year 2000. The year 2000 is our base year, and so the index in the base year is 100, but because we're talking about the year 2000, that's also the index in the current year. So we just multiply 20,000 pounds, which is the nominal GDP in the year 2000, by 100 over 100. And that leaves us with £20,000, which is the real GDP in the year 2000. However, if we do the same for 2001, we will see how this inflation adjustment actually works. The nominal GDP in 2001 was £24,000 because we sold two cars with a value of £12,000 each. Now, if we take this nominal GDP and we multiply it by the ratio of the index number in the base year to the index number in the current year, we now get 100 over 120. If we multiply 24,000 by 100 over 120, the answer is 20,000. So the adjusted GDP is 20,000, which is exactly the same as it was last year. So by this procedure, we have adjusted for the fact that prices went up but that the output didn't actually change. So what we have is that in the year 2000, we were producing two cars with a price of £10,000 each. And in the year 2001, we were producing the same two cars, but now with a price of £12,000. There was actually no growth in our economy. But because we measure GDP in money, it looked as though our economy had grown by 20%, from 20,000 to 24,000. But by adjusting these nominal GDPs by the um, ratio of two index numbers, we adjusted for inflation. So we adjusted for the fact that the prices of these cars had gone up. And... By adjusting for inflation, we take the nominal GDP and turn it into what we call real GDP by multiplying the nominal GDP by this ratio. And so the real GDP in, 2000, in the year 2000 was the same as the real GDP in the year 2001, which shows that in actual fact, the economy didn't grow at all. So by converting nominal GDP to real GDP, we can get a very good idea of the real growth rate of the economy, which is helpful for us as economists and policymakers because it tells us whether we are achieving one of our major objectives in macroeconomics, which is to make the economy really grow over time. So therefore, please remember that real GDP means GDP which has been adjusted for inflation. Real GDP means GDP which has been adjusted for inflation. And how we arrive at real GDP is by taking the nominal or raw money value GDP and multiplying it by a ratio. And that ratio is the inflation is the price index in the base year divided by the price index in the current year. And an index number 
is just one single number that summarizes the general price level in the economy. So by converting nominal GDP to real GDP, we get an idea of the real growth rate of our economy. And we are not confused by inflation, which makes it look as though our economy is growing faster than it actually is.